Empirical formulas. That's what we're going to be talking about today, empirical formulas. Um, so let's dive right into these things. We have um, a definition to start off with, an empirical formula. And this is going to be the lowest whole number ratio of elements in a compound. Um, so if we look at this, of this example of a compound right here, we have C4H10. We know that we have in any one molecule, we're going to have obviously four carbons. And one molecule, we're going to have 10 hydrogens present. We can also relate that to moles. And we would say that, that we're, there are four moles of carbon and 10 moles of hydrogen present in a mole of this. So um, that idea of moles is going to uh, allow us to um, dive into this idea of empirical formulas and then using empirical formulas to find what are called molecular formulas, which are often used um, in determining an unknown. But if we are talking about lowest, oops, sorry about that. If we are talking about lowest whole number ratios, um, what we mean by that is if we were to take um, our carbon to hydrogen ratio here in this molecule and we could divide it. And we divide it by a lowest um, common denominator. So in this case, our lowest common denominator would be 2. And so we would say that we would have an empirical formula of C2H5, still giving us whole number ratio. So this would be our empirical formula. Um, and this would be our, what we call our molecular formula, which we'll talk about next here. And so let's talk about the molecular formula next. So our molecular formula is going to be the actual whole number of the number of moles and the elements in a compound. So for example, if we have C6H12, this would be our molecular formula. We could reduce this to our, our empirical. So we could divide it by a lowest common denominator. Again, divide this guy by six on both sides. And so we're going to get CH2 as our empirical formula. See how that works? Hopefully so. Here's a couple of practice problems real quick. We're going from empirical to molecular formula. Now you will find out that sometimes the empirical formula is exactly the same as their molecular formula. And here's what I mean by that. Look at this example of water here, H2O. Now H2O is, is um, that's the empirical formula, the lowest whole number ratio. And I think I've got a little mistake here. I'm going to fix here in a second. Um, but the molecular formula for water is also H2O. So these, they're exactly the same. We cannot reduce it down anymore. And I've got a mistake to fix. Let me do this real quick. Okay, that mistake is fixed now. We had, we had our molecular formulas in the wrong place and our empirical formulas in the wrong place. So um, again, molecular formula is going to be our, our exact amount, the actual amount, where our empirical formula is the reduction. So if we look at this next one, this is uh, glucose, C6H12O6. Um, we can reduce this down as well. So obviously our, our lowest common denominator is going to be a 6, so we get an empirical formula of CH2O. That would be empirical, molecular would be that. Looking at our next one, and actually if you want to pause this right now, um, it would be a good idea, and you can do the next two um, converting molecular formulas back to empirical formulas, and then you'll be okay. Okay, if you did pause it and do it, you can check your answers now. Here we're going to divide by a lowest common denominator. Obviously it's going to be 2, and so we're going to get PCL4. On this one, we cannot divide by lowest common denominator because we have a one sulfur and two oxygens. So empirical formula of this guy is going to be exactly the same as the molecular formula. So hopefully now you see the difference between um, an empirical formula, which is the lowest whole number ratio, and a molecular formula, which is the actual numbers. Now, let's dive into some calculations involving and how we use moles, the idea of moles that we learned about, to calculate empirical formulas. So let's get into that first. So first off, we have a compound here that contains 3.047 moles of carbon. There's our first known. We have 4.54 moles of hydrogen and 3.46 moles of oxygen, and we're going to calculate the empirical formula. It's a very simple thing to do because we already have moles. Now all we need to do is find the ratio of moles to moles to moles. Okay, And so this is how we're going to set it up. We're going to find our ratio of carbon. And so we're going to go 3.407 moles of carbon. And then for hydrogen, we have 4.54 moles of hydrogen. And then for oxygen, again, very similar to carbons, 3.406 moles of oxygen. This is carbon here. Now, in order to find the ratio, what we're going to do is divide all of them by the lowest um, number of moles. So I'll write that over here, divide by lowest number of moles. 
And so if I divide 3.406 is the lowest number of moles, I'm going to divide each 3.406 to find our ratio. 3.406. So I obviously I'm going to get one here. I'm going to get really close to one here. And then it all comes down to my hydrogen. So let me run this through my calculator real quickly. And that gives me 1.33. Now that's not close enough to just round off to call it a one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one ratio. So I have to do one additional step to actually get my whole number ratios. Now I do have 0.33 and I know that if I multiply that by a whole number, I can make it turn into a whole number. And so 0.33 when multiplied by 3 gives me a whole number, and I have to do that to all of them. And if they, if they all came out to be whole numbers or super, super close to whole numbers, we wouldn't have to do this. Okay, but we do have to. So we're going to go 1.33 times 3, which gives me 3.99, which is close enough to call 4. So remember, we, in, in empirical formulas, we have to have whole numbers. So the, the empirical formula that we just found from this molecule is going to be C3. H4O3. Again, the only reason I had to multiply this by 3 here on all of these was because I had 1.33. Now, if I let's say if I had point, let's say I have a, in, in another case somewhere we had 1.25 here, then of course we would multiply this by 4 to get it to a whole number. Okay, we didn't need to do that. Let's say by some other thing, maybe I had 1.20. I'd multiply everybody by 5 to get it to a whole number. Does that make sense? Hopefully so. Let's say if I had 1.5, then I'd multiply everybody by 2, get it to a whole number. Hopefully that makes sense on those. Okay? So this is one way we can, we can uh, calculate empirical formulas from moles. Let's talk about another way we can do it here. Okay, so here's our example. We, says that we, we have an example that says a compound contains 74% mercury and 26% chlorine. Calculate the empirical formula. Now, when we're given percentages like this, these percentages should add up to be 100%. Fair enough? Fair enough. Let's, let's assume that we have 100%, and let's assume that we have 100 grams, because that'll make life easier for us. So, if we were to have 100 grams, if 74% of those 100 grams were mercury, then we would have 74 grams of mercury. Does that make sense? And then we would have, if we had 100% or 100 grams of, of a substance and 26% were chlorine, then we would have 26 grams of chlorine. So we assume a 100 gram sample on percentage problems. Assume 100%. Now, as I said before, we, wanted, we want to figure out the moles, and this is an easy conversion. We have grams. Let's do a quick mole conversion. One mole of chlorine, one mole of mercury. All we need to do is put the molar mass of mercury on the bottom and the molar mass of chlorine on the bottom, and that will give us moles of each. Okay, so um, molar mass of chlorine is 34, 35, excuse me, 35.45, and the molar mass of mercury is 200.59. And now I'm just going to go through and divide these really quickly. Okay, and so I divided those and, and popped them right in there, um, and you might want to double check my work. And now, now we, we have moles, uh, where we, we're give, where we've solved for moles. Now we're going to do the same thing as we did in the previous problem. We're going to divide by the lowest number of moles. So we're going to divide this one by... Um, obviously, the lowest number is 0.369, and this one's going to be by 0.369, and let's see what we get with that. Okay, so this is, this is obviously going to be 1, a ratio of 1 mercury, and this one comes out to be about 1.99, which I think we can definitely say that's close enough to 2. So this gives us a 1 mercury to 2 chlorines ratio for our empirical formula, so our formula is going to be HgCl2, and that's our answer for an empirical formula. Let's throw one more example at you, and then we'll talk about a couple other things that we need to take about, talk about with respect to um, um, molecular formulas. Okay, so we're given another problem here, and it's, it's, it's kind of a similar problem that we just had. It says we have a 5.325 gram sample of methyl benzoate, a compound used in the manufacture of perfumes, um, and we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and their relative masses there. Those masses now do add up to be 5.325. There are two ways to solve this problem. Both will get you the same answer. I'm going to show you one way, and I'll kind of explain the other way in the, at the end. Now, because we have grams again, um, we're going to go ahead and convert to moles, divide by the lowest, 
and there we go. Um, we could also divide our grams of each element in the total to get a percentage, assume a 100 gram sample, and then convert to moles. They both give us the same answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just divide by grams. Um, so I have 3.758 grams of carbon. I have 0 0.316 grams of hydrogen, and I have 1.251 grams of oxygen, giving us 100%. And I'm going to convert each one of those to moles by dividing by each one of those molar masses. So let's get one mole carbon, molar mass of carbon, 12.01 grams per mole, uh, one mole of hydrogen, 1.01 grams, and one mole of oxygen, 16 grams of oxygen. I'm going to go through and divide each one of these to get my number of moles of each. And then, of course, I'm going to divide by the lowest number of moles. That's going to give me, hopefully, a whole number ratio. Maybe I'll have to multiply. We'll see. Let me, let me pause it really quickly. And Okay, now I've popped in all, my, all three of my mole calculations. I can see that I have on carbon 0.313 and hydrogen 0.313. So that, that makes me feel good that I have a one-to-one -one ratio on those. It makes me feel like I've done something right. I'm going to divide these by 0 0.0782, which is the lowest number of moles, 0 0.0782. And this one, I'm not even going to do it because it's the same. It's going to be the same as carbon. So 0.313 divided by 0 0.0782. Um, so I get four, four there. Obviously, it's going to be the same here, four there. And dividing this by itself is going to give me a mole, a ratio of one. So I didn't. I, at this point, I don't have any any decimals. So I, there's my empirical formula. It's going to be carbon four, hydrogen four, and oxygen one just one oxygen. And so that was an easy way to do that. Now, I did mention there was another way to do this. If we go back to the problem, we could divide the grams of carbon by the total, multiply by 100, get a percentage, um, assume a 100 gram sample, convert it back into moles, divide by the lowest if we wanted to. It would give us the same exact answer. You can try it if you like. Okay, let's talk about molecular formulas. We're almost done here. Um, and molecular formulas, as you remember, are hopefully um, empirical formula was the lowest whole number, molecular formula was the actual number. So we're going to use empirical formulas to calculate molecular formulas. We need a couple things though. First off, um, we're going to find our whole number multiples. We'll talk about how we do that in a second. One of the ways we're going to do this is we're going to calculate molar mass, and this is usually given to us of the molecular formula. We're going to then find the empirical formula and calculate its molar mass and plug it in, and that will give us our whole number multiple. Let's do it, and I'll show you what I mean by this. Okay. So it says our example, a hydrocarbon has an empirical formula of C3H8 and an, an experimentally determined molecular weight of 121. What's its molecular formula? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. So using this formula, we have the molar mass given to us Here's our molar mass of our molecular formula, 121 grams per mole. That's, this is our molecular formula. Now, what it's given to us is the empirical formula, C3H4. I'm going to calculate its molar mass. I'm going to multiply 12.01 for carbon multiplied by 3, and then I'm going to add in um, 4.04 .04 for the four hydrogens. Hydrogen is 1.01 .01 times 4, 4.01, .01, and I get, oops, excuse me, let me switch my pen. I get an answer of 40.07. Now, if I divide these two, if I divide these two, I'm going to get my whole number multiple. So I'm going to go 121 divided by 40. You can probably already see what the answer is. It's going to be 3. My whole number multiple is 3. So I'm going to take my, I'm going to take my empirical formula of C3. H4, and I'm going to multiply it by my whole number multiple of 3, just like that, to get, my, to get my molecular formula. So the molecular formula of this compound is going to be, oops, excuse me, writing the wrong thing. Um, it's going, going to be C9H12. So again, this is our molecular formula. And given there was our empirical formula. Let me give you one last example of how we can work this through. 
here's our example. We have caffeine, a stimulant that's found in coffee and energy drinks and things like that. It's made of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. It has a molar mass of 195 grams per mole. This is going to be the molar mass here of our molecular formula. So it says calculate the empirical and calculate the molecular. So we're going to calculate the empirical just like we did before. Then we're going to use the molar mass and the molar mass of the empirical to calculate the molar mass of the molecular. Hopefully that makes sense. So here, let's do this. So we have percentages here. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume a 100 gram sample. We're going to go 49.5 grams carbon, and we're going to convert that to moles. We're going to have, so we've done that one, we're going to have 5.15 grams of hydrogen, assuming a 100 gram sample, one mole of hydrogen, 1.01 grams of hydrogen using the molar mass of hydrogen. It's going to give us our moles of hydrogen. Um, next comes nitrogen. We have 28.9 grams of nitrogen divided by its molar mass, 14.0 grams of nitrogen. It's going to give us moles of nitrogen. Let me scroll down a little bit more. And then we have 16.5 grams of oxygen divided by oxygen's molar mass of 16. And that gives us moles of oxygen. Now I'm going to go through and just, I'm going to do all these calculations really quickly and plug those numbers in. Uh, keep our fingers crossed for whole numbers, but if they're not, we can multiply them through. Okay, so now I've got my moles. I've divided them. Um, I don't see a clear pattern yet. So what I'm going to do is go through and divide each one of them by the lowest. The lowest is going to be 1.03, 1.03, 1.03, 1.03, 1.03. That last one is going to be obviously easy. We have a 1. One oxygen ratio, 2.06 is obviously going to be a two oxygen. 5.09 is probably going to be five. Yep, 4.94, we call it five. And four is going to be a four. It's pretty close to a four. 4.12 divided by 1.03 gives me four. Oh, it's perfect dead on. Okay, so now I have, I, what I can do is I can write out my empirical formula. So C4, H5. N2O. This is going to be empirical. Okay, now let me let me take a look back up here at my molecular formula it has a molar mass of 195. So I'm going to go 195 grams per mole and I'm going to divide that by the empirical formula's molar mass. So let's calculate that guy really quickly here. So we have 4 times 12.01. We're going to add in um, 5.05 for the nitrogens. We're going to add in um, 28, and then we're going to add in 16. Okay, so there, 97.05 uh, is my empirical molar mass, and so I'm going to divide those two, and I'm going to get a whole ratio of 2. So then, to get my molecular formula, I'm going to take my empirical formula, C4H5N2O, and I'm going to multiply it by that ratio of 2. So I'm going to get c 8 h 10 N 4O2 is my molecular formula. So we can use moles um, to find empirical formula, to find molecular formula. So there's our molecular formula, and there's our empirical formula we determined. Okay, and so that is our talk regarding empirical and molecular formulas. You'll have some practice problems to go along with us.